I spent the sunny days this week to visit two locations for commissioned house portraits. One in Schiedam and another in the south. So I'm starting a new large commission painting this week uh, from this lovely subject in Schiedam. I visited last week. It's a lovely part of town, town uh, still quite rough. Uh, they are building new objects over there. Uh, but for a painter it's, it's a lovely part. And there is also water with reflections, ships. It's, it's really an ancient uh, part of town. Uh, I made a few sketches for the client and they choose this one and that made me quite happy because I love this subject that much that I that I, I didn't sketch it actually I love to paint this so I made a uh, quite finished watercolor from the subject already uh, this is going to be the composition on a large canvas and the canvas will be prepared today. Um, this is the canvas already prepared with white paint. So I will put a warm grey underground over the white today uh, and then this afternoon I could already try to make an underpainting. I bought some new brushes as well because this is not a size, size I use regularly so I bought a few bigger sized brushes. This is for me quite a big size. So, I think it will take uh, two, perhaps three weeks. I'm really looking uh, forward to make this one. While the underpainting is drying, I want to make a quick watercolor from this lovely Schiedam.
In this cityscape there is a lot to see. Too much, maybe. Later in the process I realized that it's not my job to show what I'm seeing in this view. I must only look at the work and do what it is asking.
The underpainting is dry and I put the first colors on the canvas. I only think in large, straight shapes, like bricks. A painting of architecture must be strong in directions and must be straight. So the first color layer will only be painted in large, angular shapes. This is not the moment yet to define. I only give light, dark and color a place in the painting. So this is working from grey tones to colour and soon as all the colours are painted on the canvas I see they are not right. The colours are over mixed, they need more depth and less white. I'm not happy to see that but I'm lucky that I see this in an early state of the process. When the painting has become more detailed then changing a colour can be hard. The subject is, is lovely, but it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of work, and I knew it, it was going to be a lot of work, this uh, commission painting. Um, the, the subject is uh, really awesome, it's great, amazing. It's, uh, I'm lucky I was able to use the kind of light I, I prefer. I made two sketches. The first sketch was um, more colorful with uh, morning light coming from uh, from behind so all the colors were deep and strong and when I made this sketch I knew that the afternoon or late afternoon uh, could show backlight and as you already will know this is my favorite light um, it brings a lot of atmosphere and interesting reflections uh, and this is a composition with a plan uh, in the beginning uh, you, you have the water uh, the water the, the uh, moving water with the reflections of the sky then you have a dark second plan of the ship uh, a black dark ship uh, with a cate wall behind it and then the bigger plan are the houses with with the building I have to paint um, and this is a lovely plan to do in, in backlight effect because all the reflections and all the hard lines uh, and the lightning can be seen because there is a dark decker behind it. Uh, I started with the underpainting to put the composition well uh, and strong uh, to do a research for the lights and darks and I was really lucky with this result of the of the underpainting. I noticed that I was watching it all the time as it was drying. I was making other paintings, and all the time it, it took my attention. And I thought, well, that's a good uh, that's a good thing. And then the second step is uh, putting color on the underpainting. Uh, normally, you work from behind to the more c close objects, but um, when you're working with with that method, it's it's then you are working a long time in the distance and working out details, colors, contrasts. But then in in the foreground, you still have those uh, big shapes in burnt umber, and that's hard and and too warm in color. So I prefer normally to put color everywhere in the second step. But then you get a rough, uh, a rough, strange painting. When it's small, it doesn't matter. It, it takes uh, one or two hours to put all the colors everywhere, and then you're going to work on the details, and then you're lucky. Uh, 
after a day because you see you already see what it's going to be but in this size uh, it took me two days to put the colors everywhere and change a bit uh, in the sky and in the ground uh, and that was quite hard because then you are all the time watching a strange rough painting so it took me a lot today to continue and uh, with a feeling that I can do it um, but it worked out well this morning I was I was there in the painting Today I was looking at the color of the water and I decided to add more clear bright purple blue somewhere in the painting. From the moment it was on the canvas I saw the whole painting in a different new light. The clear colors became gray. They seemed clear to me all the time but as I said earlier a good painting is a collaboration of colors and contrasts. From the moment you put a fresh pink or a bright white in the painting, things are changing. The water was grey now, and I solved that with pure titanium white sparkles on the water. Later I made the black parts in the ship as black as possible. It's funny, um, these clients have a wish, uh, they would s love to see their dog in this painting. Actually this painting is a, is, a, is a present from her to her husband, and her husband has his office in the building on the right in this painting. And, and this large painting will be placed in this completely new office. Um, so I asked her a few pictures of her dog so I can try to paint it somewhere in the composition and one of the first pictures I got was this one <laughs> but I, I can't paint a large dog face in this composition all over the composition of course so I explained that and then I got a few videos and I really could use them because they are more spontaneously I, I can make a few screenshots and then I would like to place uh, the dog here on the left left from the from the ship just walking and, and sniffing uh, 
But for me, it's an exercise. We didn't have a dog when I was a kid. We only had a few rabbits, so I can draw a rabbit. But a dog will be difficult, like birds. I only paint humans in my cityscapes. And I would love to paint some birds in the sky as well, but I should exercise that. Th today I will uh, try to paint a dog for the, perhaps for the first time. And suddenly I knew the way to get those deeper colors. I put the pictures away and used the watercolor of the subject. This was the reference I was looking for. Although I was not using colors from the well-taken pictures, I immediately achieved more depth and air in the canvas. This is an important lesson for me. The real experience in a painting cannot be found in copying reality. It's in the painting, in the calibration of the colors. And again, the painting tells me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> 